Who shall? Welcome to Sound of the Dorms. My name is Kenneth Muratore. We're taking a look in Romans, the 8th chapter, the 35th verse, where we read, Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sore? And I like to look at this in the following manner. Shall the tribulation of distress, in persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril or sword, separate us from the love in Christ. See, it is a tribulation of distress, which in fact is dire calamity. It is extreme affliction. It's troubles pressing upon someone from without. And within this tribulation of distress comes persecution to make one flee, to put the flight, to drive away. And that's what was happening in the church in that day. And it happens today, too, for all those who choose to live a godly life in Christ Jesus shall be persecuted. Well, these people were literally being driven away from their homes because of this persecution. And the driving away of their homes led to famine causing a lack of sustenance of food and drink. And it was the persecution, the driving away of their homes, which led to nakedness. That is, causing a lack of raiment. And raiment, properly defined, is a covering, whether it be clothing and or shelter. God has not promised us housing. What God has promised us in this life is all spiritual blessings, in Christ Jesus. He has promised that, in fact, we have all things for life and godliness. If, in fact, he wants us here in this earth, in a particular area, he's going to sustain us physically. He's going to meet our needs. So if you're in Alaska, he's going to make sure you have food, clothing, water, and shelter to protect you from the elements. Okay, if you're in an area that doesn't require shelter, maybe you won't have shelter, but you'll have food and rain and, you know, water and such. See, what is often, what often comes across today in modern Christendom is this notion of quality of life. It's not scriptural, it's not biblical. God hasn't promised us a high standard, a high quality of life as the world deems it. He just hasn't. Now what Paul prayed was that although he prayed, he said, Lord, when he was praying, because I'm not asking, you know, to enter into persecution. I mean, in fact, he told him, he said, pray for your leaders that you might lead quiet, peaceable lives in all godliness and honesty. In all godliness and honesty. He wasn't just praying for quiet, peaceable lives, but he was praying that they would maintain themselves in the truth, in the doctrines of the Lord Jesus Christ. And if they were able to maintain themselves in that doctrine and have a quiet, peaceable life, then praise God, for he answered our prayers. But it's truth that reigns supreme. And it was the truth of these believers which brought the tribulation of distress in the form of persecution, driving them from their homes, leading to famine, a lack of sustenance, leading to nakedness, a lack of raiment, Leading them, leading them into perilous places. That is, they were being driven into territories. They were driven into areas of danger that otherwise, under normal circumstances, they just wouldn't go. All for Christ. All for truth. They were driven even unto the sword. Unto physical death. And if it were to end there, we would of all men be most miserable. But it doesn't. For we have been blessed with all spiritual blessings in Christ. It is the joy of the Lord which is our strength. And we know that there is going to be a bodily resurrection of the dead for all. For all are going to be raised incorruptible and face judgment. And those who have rejected the promised seed, the Lord Jesus Christ, shall be cast into the lake of fire that is the second death but that's not what we look for while here see though the tribulation of distress is brought about by free will agents 
who had been blinded by the God of this age through their unbelief. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. We love our enemies. We pray for those who persecute us, that they might come to the knowledge of truth. Knowing God is not overlooking their unrighteousness, but is patiently waiting and wanting all to come on their repentance while it is still called today. For today is the day of salvation. This is wonderfully summed up for us in 2 Thessalonians, in the first chapter. We're going to pick it up in verse 2. Paul speaking, Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. We are bound to thank God always for you, my brothers, as it is right, because your faith grows exceedingly, and the love of each one of you abounds toward one another, so much so that we ourselves glory in you in the churches of God, for your patience and faith in all your persecutions and tribulations which you endure. For this is a manifest token of the righteous judgment of God, that you may be counted worthy of the kingdom of God for which you suffer. Since it is a righteous thing with God to repay tribulation to those who trouble you and to give rest with us to you who are troubled at the revealing of the Lord Jesus from heaven with the angels of his power in flaming fire taking vengeance on those who do not know God and who do not obey the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ who shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his power when he shall come to be glorified in his saints and to be admired in all those who believe. Because our testimony among you was believed in that day. For today is the day of salvation. Therefore, we also pray always for you, that our God would count you worthy of the calling and fulfill all the good pleasure of his goodness and the work of faith with power, that the name of our Lord Jesus Christ may be glorified in you and you in him, according to the grace of our God and the Lord Jesus Christ. What a fantastic summary of this persecution that those who choose to live a godly life in Christ Jesus endure. What a tremendous end. For we shall be delivered from every evil work and brought safely to our heavenly home. God is able. Now, we have been blessed with all spiritual blessings in Christ, but we're going to stand in the truth regardless of the consequences. We're going to walk in the truth regardless of where that leads us. It's by the power of God. It's not of might. It's not of power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord. As we continue reading in Romans, we see that in the 8th chapter, picking up in the 36th verse, as it is written, For thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. May God bless.